Today we have an entirely new type of episode where we're bringing on people that I follow and I respect from the crypto Twitter, which is an entirely different universe than crypto YouTube. They have amazing insight into the markets. I've seen each of these guys absolutely destroy calls from 10x to 20x, sometimes even more. These guys definitely know how to play new low cap gems in the market. And we talk about everything going on in this space you're definitely going to want to watch this one it's packed with value from beginning to end and you're definitely going to want to follow the three guys that i have here on the show today they are bullrun gravano mr business intelligence and elon trades again their twitters are linked in the description but i hope you guys enjoy this and if you guys are excited go ahead smash that like button it's a free and easy way to support the channel and remember each and every comment like usual is entered to win your very own ledger nano s with that said let's Let's dive in. We have in the house legends of crypto Twitter. We have Elon Trades. We have Bullrun Gravano, and we have Mr. Business Intelligence. Um, I want to go around. Thank you guys so much for participating in this. Uh, I want to go one by one and sort of have you guys introduce yourselves uh, to the audience, and of course, tell them your handle and all that. We'll show it here on the screen, um, and then we can dive into some good trade, uh, good t- uh, trade talk. How about Elon Trades? Why don't you start? Sure. Hey, everybody, and uh, thanks, Elio, for having me on. Um, well, I got into crypto in 2017, like a lot of people. I got in somewhere in the middle of the bull run, and like a lot of people, I didn't get out on time. So uh, I've definitely experienced the ups and downs of the market. And um, over the last three years, I've learned a ton of things. And what I try to do on Twitter, uh, YouTube, Telegram is try to share my experience and try to teach everybody to not make the mistakes I did. So don't follow them, you know, don't repeat the mistakes that I did. And that's pretty much what I try to do. I try to guide my followers into a way to make the most profit uh, possible and try to uh, mitigate their risk uh, to the greatest degree possible. It's an admirable, admirable pursuit. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Elon. Uh, Mr. Business Intelligence, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, Elio, thanks for having me on. Um, I got into crypto in about October of 2018. So I passed the bull run and in essence got into the crypto and the bear market. Um, had a choice between going into crypto or going into stocks. And uh, thankfully I made the right decision. Um, got wrecked immediately as soon as I got in. Got wrecked, did not know what I was doing um, until you know after a while I started understanding how the game worked. And um, you know again, I would not be here without my brothers from Spectre you know, Capo, Bitcoin Brown, Johnny Zcash. I learned a lot from them. And my strategy, in essence, is a combination of, of their philosophies. Um, and so, you know, you know, I, I became somebody who dabbled into um, low cap altcoins. And I think that's basically my strength. Um, and that still continues to be my strength. Yeah, well, thanks for sharing that. Uh, I, did, I think low cap gems is something we're all uh, we've all shared at this point. As uh, the magic of those is is quite spectacular. Um, and last but not certainly not least, Mr. Bullrun Gravano. So hey, Elliot, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so I'm Bullrun Gravano. I uh, came on board, got on the scene in 2017, maybe the summer of 2017. It was my brother who actually got me involved. He initially introduced me to Ethereum. Of course, I knew about Bitcoin for, for several of years, but he uh, he told me about Ethereum when it was about $120. And uh, I started to dabble in, in large caps at that time. I was really just investing in Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, touched Ripple a little bit. And shortly after that is when we hit the bull market and um, made a lot of mistakes like like most people did. Um, learned from the mistakes over the next couple of years, survived the bear market, um, really used that two years to learn, 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 read. I bought a lot of books. I studied. Um, I really I jumped right in, jumped into Twitter. Uh, I was one of those guys in the early days who was trading on exchanges like Yobit, and I was in the uh, in the troll box watching what other people were doing. So, you know, you got a, a bunch of Russian guys in there telling everybody what to buy, and, and I was one of those guys chasing it, you know, chasing green candles, and couldn't understand why the moment I was investing, uh, five minutes later it was dumping, 
And, uh, and I was doing that over and over and over again. And I just had to learn trial and error. Um, again, I, I bought a couple books, started to study. Um, I stayed in the game. I started to network myself, started to reach out to projects. Um, I think the first project that I ever got into was HTML coin as far as micro caps go. And that itself, I think over the winter of 2018, had a massive uh, bull run on a, of its own. It probably went from about three sats to, to about 40 sats. And for, for me, that was huge. Um, saw a small investment go several multiples, and it really gave me the itch to continue. Um, of course, I wrote it halfway back down again <laughs> as it dumped, but um, really quickly, just to backtrack, my history goes back 20 years. I was, um, I worked in financials. I worked at Morgan Stanley for several years, working in New York City, um, had experience on the trade floor, um, worked in unified communications, everything from telephony to video conferencing, things like that. So I was in that world for quite a while. And, and really transitioning to this was, you know, there was a familiarity and, and an excitement to it. And, you know, a couple of years later, here I am. I've, uh, I've grown. I've uh, produced my own Telegram channel with nearly 500 members and, uh, you know, found some success on Twitter. And, uh, you know, I'll pass it back over to you, but, you know, we can get into more of that later. But thank you. You know, again, thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I appreciate you sharing your your history and in, in sort of traditional uh, Wall Street world, which, you know, we don't actually get that many, you know, ex Wall Street guys here on crypto YouTube. And I see a lot of sort of uh, sort of financial types uh, drifting around uh, crypto Twitter or, or folks with maybe a little bit more uh quote unquote, serious uh, experience. And I think that, you know, it's it's very interesting that there's all this knowledge that's on crypto Twitter that I found, especially I became really obsessed with crypto Twitter this summer as the altcoin cycle kicked off. And I think that it's really you have to be on crypto Twitter to understand uh, a lot of what's going on with these uh, micro cap, low caps, especially since Uniswap. Um, but you touched on something really very interesting when you just said that, which is that you were, you were chasing green candles constantly and you just didn't understand it. And I think that that's certainly an experience that everyone goes through. But what I really wanted to bring you guys on to discuss is the process, right? Uh, because, you know, I'll just share with you guys, uh, all these guys have called uh, for the audience, all these guys have called just ridiculous, ridiculous coins. I've seen each one of them call 10 X's, if not multiple 10 X's. Um, and so, you know, when I see people repeating that kind of almost ridiculous success, I, I get, I get curious, right. And I want to learn more from them. And so that's kind of what we're here to do is to try to understand their brains and how they're picking these coins, why they're looking at them at such low valuations. And again, it, it helps me inform my own process. As you guys know, I'm obsessed with this pursuit as well. So uh, if we could go around and we could talk about uh, the process that you guys use to approach the market and, and which coins uh, have helped form that. Sure. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead, Elon. Sorry, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pass the mic around. Okay. Um, so, of course, when we're looking at low caps, we want to find something that is low cap, but also already hasn't done sometimes already hasn't done 1020 X because even though something is a low cap, doesn't necessarily mean it has that much room to grow. If the people that purchased are already up 20 X, you might have to wait a while until it consolidates. Right. But if you find something that has not already gone up that much is starting at, starting out at a 500 K to a million dollar market cap has a, uh, has some strong fundamentals. I mean, we can take easy, for example, uh, when I was looking into easy, uh, I got in around a dollar 20, a dollar 30, and just recently, I think it hit ten, twelve dollars. Yeah, no, it hit, it hit, it hit eleven or something like that. Right. So when I was looking into it, uh, it was it started off at around an eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollar market cap, and uh, I did some research and. It always matters. You got to connect the dots. Sometimes I noticed that Easy, the CEO, was also um, a CEO and founder of a um, company. I'm trying to remember what the CoinFox that had connections with Binance. It was an official Binance broker. Uh, partner. So I connected the dots there. I had no idea it was going to list on Binance. And when it did, I mean, obviously I was ecstatic, but you, it, it requires a lot of um, time 
to research these things and not a lot of people can do it. A lot of people have full-time jobs. Luckily, I'm in the position where I can do this full-time. But that's one of the things I look into is I research and a lot of the times I'll speak to the CEOs themselves and uh, try to get out as much um, information as I can to, to the degree that they can provide me. I think that's a great uh, piece of a, a little nugget. A uh, first nugget here is just understanding the team, looking into their connections, understanding, uh, you know, trying to predict potentially uh, what good things could happen to this. And you, you found the Binance connection, and wouldn't you know it? I mean, they listed on Binance real quick. There's also the Matic connection to Binance, and so you know, we we know mm -hmm. that they're very close. And so you know, it's it's uh, one data point, especially when it starts having confluence uh, with other data points, is super super valuable. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, how about you, Mr. Business? So, you know, my philosophy is low cap, um, low supply. And I think supply, uh, you know, especially in the era we live in now where, you know, at, at a the token generation event, you only see 10% of the supply. And then the next month you get like a billion unlocks, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't always like that. Um, the, I think the first real um, winner I had was ThorChain. And so I remember the day I got into ThorChain, they burned 50% of the supply. So they were at 1 billion, they burned 50%, they were at 500 million. And I said, you know what? This is gonna pump just based on this news. And I knew a little bit about the fundamentals, but not as much as um, I did post investing. And so that ended up going from one cent to, I think at its peak might've been a dollar, $10, 20. So I did it in essence 100X, right? Um, and yes, I'm still. I, I've I've took out, took my profits, and I'm still holding. I believe in the project. I know it's 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 down a lot. It's still. I think it's about 40, 30 or forty cents now, right? Which is still you know forty x. But you know, obviously, you take profits on the way up. But um, you know, even before I look at the team, I look at supply, look at market cap. Then I decide to look into the team, right? And that's another thing I did with um, X Die Stake, where you know they're like essentially a, a, a layer two scaling solution to Ethereum. Um, I got in around two dollars and it actually dumped to one dollar and i dollar cost average because i knew it was good i said look the supply is low right it's probably pre-sale people um dumping it and so i just did, decided to dca in um next i stake we ended up going from two dollars to about forty dollars right and that has probably one of the strongest fundamentals in the space right now um and, you know again the same thing i think i think um elon you you helped um pump this one the ferrum from network you know yeah. got in early last year and um, it was, I think it was 0 0.006 and it actually hit about 10 cents, right? And I think it started getting a lot more traction once Elon started um, talking about it, right? And it was another low cap. It was, they, they did a really, another thing that goes um, under the radar, they did a really low raise. So they started at about, I think a 200, 250, um, $300,000 market cap. Um, and they're about 5 million now. And I think they've, they were as high as maybe 10 million. So the pattern, again, you know, the pattern I'm looking at is low cap, low supply. Uh, and one more thing, staking. A lot of these, you have staking, you lock up lock up the supply and staking. Ferrum Network had it. ThorChain had it to the point where 90% of the supply was locked in staking. So you had about 100 million circulating, 90% locked up. The price, you know, it's going to be a lot of volatility, but that looks good for the project. You have people who believe in the project. Um, mm -hmm. RVX was another one, Rivix. Um, was another one they had um, really good fundamentals and they also had some some type of staking and they they did really well as well. so I so I want to dig deeper into that you said low supply right and yep. you know in my opinion supply doesn't matter right it's about uh, price meets supply right it, it, it's it's uh -huh. it's it's psychological right but it feels like we've been entered into a new era where you know the YFIs and people are now doing like ultra ultra low supply, like ten thousand yeah. coins or one thousand coins, um, where to me that becomes you know almost like a, a, just a weird beanie baby type thing where it's just an <laughs> ultra collectible. Wow! Um, no, I mean, we all we all we all know that you you do that because you want the price to pump. Obviously, right? That's why that's why you do that for ten thousand of supply. But once something get reaches you know ten thousand dollars in value. My belief is that the psychology of it is it's too expensive for most people. They see it as too expensive. So I think it actually in, in really inhibits growth past a certain point is, is sort of my belief. Well, Ali, I, I think, I think oh, Ali, you just I think you hit the nail on the head when you just said you said playing to the psychology of the trader right, or the, or the investor. A lot of what you see out there is pumpamentals, hype, 
playing to the trend, what, what people are interested in right now. And the trend right now, as the other guys just mentioned, is these low cap, uh, low cap, low supply coins. And yes, there is a mental number that a lot of people have of like $10,000 when, you know, when something hits about $10,000, that's, that's about as far as they want to go, as far as value goes before they say, well, you know, I've, I'm filled to the brim on this one. I'll move on to the next, um, you know, I've hit my mental number, but although recently I have played a lot of low cap, low supply coins, I also attest to the idea of it's not necessarily the supply that really matters. Right. Um, and again, it's the trend right now, but not too long ago. Well, I say, let's go all the way back to 2017. Look mm -hmm. at coins like verge. Yeah. Who had, you know, 14, what, 14 billion. Yeah. As ripple, a supply. Ripple. ripple. There you go. And, and these thing, these, these coins went thousands of times over mm -hmm. um, and made people millions of dollars. Now times have changed, but, the reality is that there are coins out there that have a higher supply, but if the cap is low and the potential to grow is there, then some of these coins need to be taken seriously. You need to look a little bit deeper at them. Um, what I've done is I do look at the tokenomics. Um, I do look at the pumpamentals. Can this do multiples? But in order to really determine that, I look at the team. I see who's on board. I see who the advisors are. Um, how strong are they? What's their what's their goals? Um, what's their vision? Do they have something that could actually work that that could be adopted that people are going to get excited over? Now, there there's two phases there. There's there's two elements I should say. There is is this something that's fundamentally sound and could really work and solve a problem or work in today's economy? And B, the other side of that is can it garner the hype? Can it get people excited? Do they have the ability to market it? Do they have a team behind it that knows the community and seems to put community first? Mm -hmm. Is out there answering questions. So, you know, what I've done is I'll go in their telegram, find out who the admins are, find out who's running the show. Is the CEO of the project in that telegram at all? Um, are they answering questions or are they... You know, are they being really short with their answers? Like, you know, are they given the attitude like, well, I'm a developer, you know, I don't really have time for this kind of an attitude. Or are they excited to tell people about their product? I found out that a lot of the products that succeed or the projects that succeed have teams, have core um, elements of their team that are truly excited about what they're building and sharing that with everybody. And if the tokenomics are there, the pumpamentals are there, and the team is there, um, and of course, the the fundamentals behind it. If you can snowball that all up into one big package, then you have something that can absolutely explode. And you know, I think all three of us here, um, I probably all four of us here, have seen um, you know, seen th things like that come together, where we've you know we've run into the 2050 100 x before because all of those things have seemed to come together and melt properly. Yeah, no, I appreciate all that. I think you've dropped uh, many, many nuggets in there. And before we go on to, which will be a main portion of this discussion, which is, of course, the hype, the FOMO, the degen kind of aspect of this market, which I tend to, as you guys know, push back on a lot because it's so momentary uh, that I feel like it's quite gambling. But before we go into that aspect of it, uh, which obviously I, I do want to commend all of you because you've all done very well at identifying projects that will do well. However, I do want to talk a little bit more about supply here because it was a trend just a few years ago that high supply coins were far more uh, doing far more X's and gains. And I could still say that I still think that that's a, a trend, right? I mean, you see these TikTok videos going viral of people saying, wow, I just bought this. If it just goes to a dollar, then we'll be rich. Right. And that mentality of this thing is cheap. They don't realize that the supply is 100 billion. This, the mentality well, is like that. Yeah. And, 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 and most people entering the space, if we are to get the normie wave, will look at a high supply coin and think it's cheap. Absolutely. That, that's what that's happened during the bull run, 2017 bull run. They all came out of the woodwork looking at it the same way. 
And so right now, people buying a 10,000, like when Core hits $10,000, you realize it couldn't go further. When you saw YFII hit $10,000, just people were, couldn't, didn't believe it had more gas. You know, YFI hitting $40,000 to me, like the number makes my head hurt, you know, to think about. And so even though the supply is low. And so for me, I know even me, I don't want to buy that when it's up at that price point. So I think that there's a sort of initial hype that happens when things are sort of under $1,000. But then after it gets to in the thousands, I feel like the the low supply is really a, a big obstacle to growth. I mean, am, am I on point here? Or what do you guys think? Well, I mean, I think, you know, one thing we have to realize is past results not guarantee future success, right? So when we came into 2017, there was there was not a precedent set, right? Uh, right now, when you look at it, what's the number one reason why people think XRP won't, won't pump? Because they say the supply is too large. Nobody was saying that before. But now that we now obviously what hurts it is that the price is not you know, done well. And so and we've seen other coins come in that have a lower supply that have done well. Um, it's not always the case. We saw Cardia Chain, which has, I think, you know, close to maybe two billion uh, supply that did really well. I, I personally stayed away from that. I had a lot of my Spectre guys telling me, "Let's get in this." I said, "No, guys, it's two, it's two billion. It's gonna, you know, whatever, one, one five, one point five, two billion. It's never gonna pump." But it, it pumped, and that kind of led me to change my philosophy, where I'm like, "All right, it doesn't have to be one hundred, two hundred, three hundred million, but I still won't invest in something like Kin, which has got like ten Trillion, I think. I don't even know. Like ten billion, it's a ridiculous amount. And another coin like NPSX, right? Those coins that have like point zero 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 one cent. Like, oh my god, if this goes to a dollar, I'm gonna be a gajillionaire, right? So we still have people in the space like that, um, but it's not as common as it was even when I came in 2018. It was extremely common um, that people would say, if this goes to a dollar, I'm gonna be a billionaire, a millionaire. Uh, I, th I think if I think the normies, absolutely newer people. Can we get them to think that? Yes, um, it's it, it's kind of it's kind of uh, sad that we have to prey upon their, um, you know, their their uh, naiveness in order to pump our bags. But that that's definitely going to happen. To what extent, I don't know. Um, but you know, I I do think I do think uh, that we are at a point right now where we have much more educated investors who do look at supply. And I mean, I'm getting people right now who are telling me about fully diluted market cap. How many people in 2017 cared about fully diluted market cap? No one shouldn't shouldn't care you about. It. Shouldn't but, care about. It. I, I agree. 100. <laughs> well, this we, is we this is an interesting know. topic. It's an interesting it's topic. Should, should we should, should we care? Should we care well, about fully diluted? Release schedules. Release schedules are all that matter. Exactly. Is, you look at the schedule. You see when the coin's coming out, and if it's coming out six months from now, why do you care? So you, care. you're essentially going to miss out on. on and a five or 10 X because of something that's happening six months down the line. It's ridiculous. We're in a speculative market where, and now we're talking about fully diluted market cap. It's I mean, ridiculous. it just doesn't seem to add up. The, and I've never seen where it really applies. Do we, we don't know what the market's going to look like in six months, 12 months from yeah. now. How uh, unless, you tell me, unless you tell me tomorrow, unless you tell me the next month, fine. Right. But even if you told me, right, listen, you can make a two X right now, but they're going to, they're going to do, they're going to release, you know, the supply is going to go by two X next month. I don't care. I'll take the two X right now. Then, I, <laughs> then, then I'll take my profit. And, and, I, and I, if I have to, I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of it. But again, people are, people are thinking so, so long-term that they're, that they're losing short-term gains. I mean, let's even take XRP, for example, how many years has XRP been, XRP been around? It's only at half of its entire supply currently. So it's full supply is, um, 100 billion and it's only at 45 billion. So I don't know why anybody would take uh, fully diluted market cap into account. So yeah. I think that brings up, and I appreciate uh, when you, I love it when you see, you know, complete uh, agreement across a three, three people that in no way prepared for this together, uh, but they've all been acing the market and they all agree fully diluted is, is nonsense, right? So I think that brings in a great question of what is the time frame? That you guys are looking at the market. What's the time frame? Is it seconds? Is it minutes? Is it days? Uh, how long do you plan when you get into these projects to hold? Mm -hmm. And like, what is your what is your strategy as far as timing? For me, wow. mostly months, several months for the most part. I don't do a lot of long term holds. That's me. Yeah, I, I, you know, I would somewhat agree with that. It, it to, to me. It depends on the project. Um, yeah. There are projects that I'm literally looking at from uh, a standpoint of weeks at the most for some of my trades. Now, those are trades, right? For investments, mm -hmm. 
I really don't look too much past six months out. Um, I'll, I'll reevaluate when that time comes, but my target is what, what can this do in six months? And then when that, you know, as we get closer, I'll reevaluate, but what can I achieve in that, in those first few months? Um, now, again, with, with a lot of these people that are coming into the market now, they, they need to be educated. And that's, that's what I try to do um, from my Twitter account and from my Telegram is kind of teach them some of the mistakes that I made when I came in in 2017 and give them a perspective on how you need to look at the market as a whole. Um, and, and that really helps people like reassess how, how they're looking at projects, how they're looking at the tokenomics of something, whether they want to step in, um, and, and what time frames. So again, Ellie, if you're talking about time frames, um, you really, <laughs> the reality is, and I think the guys will agree, you have to look at the hype factor. That's just a part of what this market is. And, and if we're talking about shorter time frames, that's where it really has more significance. Um, fundamentals, to me, is more if if we're looking about six months or or further on out, um, you know, are they really built to last? So again, you're, if you're talking about trades, is this more about now and hype and pumpamentals, or is this something that's going going? <clears throat> excuse me, I'm swallowed something. Um, <laughs> is this about going short term? I'm sorry, is this about going long term and, and having the ability to last in the market? Yeah, I, th I appreciate that. And uh, I think you guys, are, you guys are all hitting on really interesting points here. And I think it really brings up the question of, you know, what is this X factor when you see that X factor and hype? You know, I've, I've seen Gravano in specific really focus on projects that I don't necessarily always see the through line with, but then they'll go like 10X, 20X. And, you know, they don't always stay there. In fact, most of the time they don't. But, you know, still a 20X is pretty crazy, right? That's a crazy gain. Even if it's only there for a couple of hours, uh, you have plenty of time to sort of take your profits there. Um, what, you know, I, I talk a lot about sort of tokenomics only projects. Projects without products, they're just a tokenomics sort of scheme, you know? And I'm not really a fan of them because I see them as, you know, you can copy and paste tokenomics. Any project can copy and paste tokenomics. Um, but, why do you guys, and, and I, you don't have to agree with this, but why do you guys think that tokenomics alone can support a project? Uh, and, and what examples do you think uh, are there of that just working? Besides Bitcoin, of course. Initially, it can. Initially, what, what draws people to the project is tokenomics, right? We were looking at all these Uniswap coins. Let's look at Uniswap. And if you want to look at Uniswap, a lot of these Uniswap coins, they say this is a low supply. And so what happens, though, if the supply is low, that means if I get in early enough, right, it can do multiple. It could do multiples. Um, so I think what that does is it gets people interested to learn more about the project, right? So you need to first see that they're pumpamentals in order to then understand the FA. And I think, like, I mean, look, look, look at how even influencing on Twitter has changed now. When we talk about a project, we list the supply, we list the market cap. Right, and then now we're listing the contract. That's then this has changed in the last five six months, and the the number one thing people want to know about supply used to be, hey man, here's this project, here's the partnership, here's the exchange they're gonna get on, mm -hmm. right? But we've gone away from that, and partly because of the bear market, right? So a lot of these we would call the the gen plays, they're just a holdover. And I think you know, uh, you know, Bo and Gravano and I and you know, mm -hmm. Apple, so you know, we were involved in these. I think he would agree, these are just holdovers. These these, these are these are not the these are not the ones that. We look at it as making us, um, you know, uh, you know, generational wealth. But there was a bull market, and we saw the you know swap plays were profitable, and we went after them. But we know in the long run, it's always going to be FA, and it's going to be FA with other things that cost fundamentals. But supply, to me, honestly, I think to personally, su su supply to me is always the most important thing, and that's the one thing I look at. I always look at supply. I look at supply. I look at market caps important too, but I always look at supply. Yeah, Elliot, you mentioned um, is our tokenomics the only thing you know that could carry? You know, could you look at it from just a purely tokenomics perspective? And I would say no. That you could, short, like as Mr. Business was just talking about, a lot of those Uniswap plays, short-term plays. Well, you can you can take advantage of those plays, get involved, get in, 
makes take some profit, maybe leave a little bit there in case it moons. But I wouldn't necessarily say, unless it's a really, really fundamentally sound project, not always something to just stake a large part of your investment in. Maybe you know, put, make them little plays, a couple ETH here and there, um, depending on what your bankroll is. But um, you know, don't rely solely on tokenomics if you're talking about something that's going to be on maybe a centralized exchange with with a plan that wants to succeed long term. Um, and again, as as Mr. Business was talking about, Uniswap is kind of that playground where if if you want to look at tokenomics, you want to look at low supply, um, are they hyping it up? Well, you know, play the game. Sure. Um, just be smart about it. Know when, know when to take your investment out. I, I see too many, um, too many people on Twitter, too many people who follow me who get sour because they left their entire investment in a play, and when it pumped, you know, two x, sometimes three x, they, you know, and I get it. Sometimes greed takes over. Sometimes excitement takes over. They leave their entire investment in there. They don't take their capital back out. And then, you know, it retraces naturally like everything does. Always find a retracement eventually. And then Always. that's when the sour grapes occur. So, you know, that's when people get mad and say, oh, you know, I, I took my entire bankroll of 10 ETH and I put it in this project. And now, you know, and now I'm down. And I want to say, and I always say, did you take out your capital? Did you, did you take profit? And then it's crickets. I don't get an answer. So that's where I, I try and communicate that to my community that no matter what you're in, it could be what you envision as the greatest project in crypto. Never overexpose yourself. Always take your capital out when something pumps. And I think a lot of the influencers out there, a lot of the people who have been in crypto for a couple of years at least, who've been in the game, who've made those mistakes, will preach the same thing. Always set yourself up to trade another day. Don't don't just ride something. Yeah, that's that's really critical. Is is knowing when to get out, and I think that understanding and categorizing uh, the different plays. I mean, you know, you said it, Mister Business. Uh, you you touched on it as well, uh, Gravano, as well as you, Elon. Which is, you know, there are these short term plays, and then when you're in them, you need to know if I get a two to five x, I'm securing my initial capital because that's you just don't know right i went on a sort of rant that's the sort of the biggest toe dip i did into the dgen market was when i was talking about the core clones and i thought i was really clear that these are tokenomic sort of dgen plays but it's clear to me that what core achieved was going to be contagious and that people would want to hop on the hype but as soon as i got pumps out of any of them and it looked like that pump was starting to run out of steam took some profits and I was happy. Right. And, and somebody tweeted at me the other day, uh, all of the, all of the, the dumps of all the core clones. And I was yeah, like, yeah, of course, that. of course they were going to dump. That's not the point. But did you see the part where they all pumped 10 X? You know, mm -hmm. that's like, that was the point is that there was going to be huge pumps and that it's very rare that you have a, a, an easy formula to know, Hey, this one launching is going to pump 10 X. This one launching is going to pump 10 X. And they're not going to stay there. They're going to crash. Just if the OG original best in class crashed, like Core did, I'm not saying Core's clash crashed. I'm, I don't want to offend anyone here. I'm just saying if the best yeah. one pulled back significantly, small, small small correction, whatever, the best one is is pulling back and not having the same kind of, why would the clone uh, do better without any necessarily uh, innovative twist? And so, you know, I think it's what you guys said is key, which is categorization of your plays, understanding the time length that you're expecting this play to last, and understanding where to get out uh if it does go uh, and perform well uh is, is really really good very good wisdom. and also if you're going to mess around with uniswap and you want to get into something that really only has tokenomics going for it not really any fundamentals and you're really wanting to gamble with these d gym plays you need to get in early and you need to make a few x's or five or ten x whatever your target is and get out because things that don't have fundamentals backing them they're going to crash 100 yeah. percent. Turn, yep. turn those notifications on guys <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> who you, yeah. Who, who you sure. follow and your notifications, because if you know, as soon as you see the notification go off and you see somebody talk about something that's new, you got to get in it. You you don't you don't. I mean, you could. There's, there's literally been times where I've looked at the price and I've I'm not no joking. It's gone up 50, 75 percent right in front of my eyes. I said mm -hmm. I I I'm not going to go in. I'm not going to fumble. Right. Yep. Nope. And yeah. so, 
and, and going back to, you know, these are strategies. I know Bo and Garano touched upon it uh, previously. You got to go on the telegram. You got to see uh, who's in there. You know, and one thing I do is I look, I, I, you know, and this sounds crazy. I read the comments. I read what people say to get, um, you know, to get a feeling of what the community thinks. Right. And a lot of, a lot of times, I've seen great projects be killed by terrible communities. I'm not going to call them out. I've been in some of them, yep. and I and I and I've seen projects be saved by by hardcore communities, by hardcore backing communities. Just just to go back, you know, the the, the point of supply. And what you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention um, RSR. Point I got into late, but 10 billion supply. I think uh, I, I, a large total supply, but the FA is so strong that it did. I think about 25 to 30 x from its bottom in about eight months. I think about them out about eight to ten months ago, it did all the way up to 30x, and no, you know, nobody's talking about the the tokenomics there because the you know the PayPal connections, um, especially with the news recently, the FA is so strong that it can overcome the tokenomics. However, I would I would say that's the outlier. I would say that's the exception, not the rule. Um, I, I don't, you know, a, a, a 10 billion coin now doing a 30x. It's, it's ridiculous in this market, and it, and it did all this in the bear market. And as you mentioned, the, the community is strong there too. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, they're ridiculously strong. Right? Yeah. You guys know Cardia Chain, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, Cardia Chain, oh, yep. So I was in uh, Cardia Chain at around 0 0.002 cents. It went up to 0 0.04. I did not hold all the way up, up there, but the way that they did that was purely through community. They were very engaged with the community. They were good at marketing. And just like Bolo and Gravano said, I 100% agree. If you don't have marketing, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I mean, and it's funny I missed out on Kai because uh you know one of the guys from Spectre, uh, uh, Johnny Reed, he's an ambassador, and he kept telling us about this, and I kept thinking, no man, this is the supply is too large, it's never gonna. I, I just brushed it off, and it it did amazingly well. Mm -hmm. Yep, I I found you guys might know that I, I found one that that really relied on the community and put the community first, and I think that's a big portion of their success right there was Vox, and I happened to. I happened to stumble upon them while, while doing my search and I, and I reached out to the CEO myself and talked to him. Um, I made, I had an entry at about $135. They've, they've peaked at over like $2,100. I think they're riding around 13, 1400 right now. But what I found from, from him and eventually from the community that there was, there was a synergy between the two. He was always in that telegram answering questions asking me personally once we built a relationship and i spoke to him several times do you have anybody that you could refer to me as a strong admin somebody who's really community first who wants to answer questions who understands our white paper that like he really took a gent you know a, a, a sincere interest in the, com the community building something alongside of them um and that's where I've seen previous success from other projects where they put the community first, they created a governance system where people have a voice, where people can vote, um, they can help determine the uh, yeah, you know, the steps this project's going to take in the future, how they're going to build, what they're going to uh, provide for the investors in the future. Um, and, and they really seem to do that. And that's something that I look for in projects now and what I'll continue to look for in the future is, you know, does the project, A, have a strong team, strong developers, um, strong advisors, but and B, almost as significant, do they have a strong community by, behind them? And are they, um, are they genuinely um, concerned and affected by that community? So, again, I, you know, I think those are some of the elements that I look for. Yeah, you know, the Vox play is certainly one that I uh, that it caught my attention because, to me, respectfully to the Vox community, I just don't see a lot there. You know, I just don't see a lot in the project. Right? It's tokenomics. It's interesting, kinda. To me, it's not super interesting, but then it goes, you know, 21x or whatever it did since obviously I follow you, Gravano. I, I know when you put out some of your alpha and I, I almost bought it when you put it out. But then I, I just said to myself, <laughs> this doesn't, this doesn't, I, I don't get it. Um, and so that's why I was like, you know, there's something going on here. You are identifying, you know, all of you guys are identifying really, really good opportunities in the market. And so, uh, yeah, I'm curious, you know, is, is community management, is that enough? Is that enough with some interesting tokenomics? 
No, it's not enough. Yeah. It's not going to carry the project. There has to be other elements. Now, again, when it came to that project, the tokenomics were there too. The mm-hmm. the supply is extremely low. The initial the initial total supply was 1250 vox that's going to you know there's minting so they're going to eventually get up to about 4500 but there's um with transact with every transaction there's now a three percent burn on every transaction um the the apy on on the staking and the farming is is relatively good right now so people are are incentivized to keep their tokens on the platform which obviously is going to decrease the available supply. So, you know, with um, with supply and demand, if you're looking at it from that perspective, there's there's a you know a feature that'll draw you in. Um, they're also working on a mobile platform, so it's not just people sitting in front of their laptop. Um, and I think that to me is something that projects seem to always put on the back burner i wouldn't say always but often put on the back burner they talk about mobile applications ios and android but we talk about adoption and crypto and we think about you know DeFi, and everybody seems to talk about the ability for for people to have alternative solutions to, to traditional banking um to me it's not always it's not about sitting in front of your laptop what about let's take it 10 steps further let's 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 really look outside the box and let's think about something like say the chinese migrant farmer out in the middle of the country he doesn't have a you know an imac or you know a macbook he's not sitting on that but they do have a little phone a cheap phone they can go on and if they can access some of these platforms, these simple D apps via their mobile device, well, then you've created a new opportunity for them to get involved. And that's where I see like, you know, a project like Vox where they're aiming to quickly ramp up their their mobile platform. They actually, one of their two developers comes from a mobile phone developer and, you know, is really focused on that. But again, I look at it from the standpoint of, um, you know, adoption. And I, the adoption can be a cliche word, but if you really look at it, what are you trying to achieve with adoption? You're trying to achieve accessibility for the everyday person or people who are not, um, who do, do not have the financial opportunities that most of us do have. So um, that, you know, those are some of the aspects I'm looking at it from. Well, I, th- I thank you for that. Yeah, that was that was a great answer. Um, and it kind of brings me to the question of sort of, uh, you, we're talking about the stage that we're in, right? We're talking about, you know, Mr. Business said, uh, this is a holdover. We're in a holdover moment, right? Before the FA plays really kick in. Where are we right now? Are we in a bull run? Or are we in a... Are we in the beginnings of a bull run? Are we just getting the jets warmed up? Are we, you know, because the speculation market has become once again very fruitful, obviously volatile. But I mean, if you know how if you know what you're doing, um, I think it's been a fruitful few months for you. You know, I've I've noticed a lot of people having success in in the market. I'm getting a lot of DMs about people having amazing success in the market. Um, Is this the bull run or are we just right now coming out of a very, very traumatic bear market? Depends what happens at the election tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, not, I'm one of those you know, who don't subscribe to that. I that's what everybody's waiting for, I think. I think everybody's you know, waiting to see what's going to happen with this election. I, I, I've, I've, I've held my positions that I've held for a long time. I've not gone in anything um, heavily, you know, at, you know, dollar cost average. Um, I, I'm, you know, again, you know, the, the state of the election and COVID um, has a lot of influence on the market, right? So, Depend again. I live in I live in New York, and they're boarding up they're boarding up businesses in anticipation of what might happen, right? And that's probably happening in in major cities. And I think we you know we all live in the U.S. Major cities all over the U.S. That's happening. Yeah. Um, so I, it, it's really really unpredictable. I have no idea what's going to happen. People say if, if Biden wins, the the stock market's going to crash, and in, in hmm. turn maybe that uh, carries over the crypto. And they think if Trump wins, we're going to have the biggest uh, you know stock market and crypto rally ever so yeah. that, 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 those are the two dichotomies 
who else no, we think, who else has an opinion on this <laughs> well, I, I have an opinion and i i think none of that matters i, I don't think the election i think in the long term it, 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 there may be a very very short term uh ripple effect regard regarding whoever gets elected but i personally don't think the election is going to affect the the markets as a whole um long term that's just my opinion but um and and mr business and i live across the river from each other so, so yeah. we, both, we both we both do see the same things um, on the other hand as much as a negative has been as horrible as i think it's had and i it's i hate to use this word but i think it's, it's had somewhat of a positive effect on crypto because now people are working from home some people are unemployed right but more people are now dabbling in crypto have more free time to, to get into it um are spending more time at working from home on their laptop it's just created more opportunities for people to start learning i mean people are trying to learn different things let's, let's be honest like you know people are unemployed they're trying to find out new revenue streams so i think what it's done is create opportunities within crypto um but again who am I? I? I don't know for sure what the, what the election <laughs> is going to happen. That's, 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 that's a valid point. 100%. I don't think I don't think we have had we have this Uniswap run if it's not for COVID. Because yeah. of COVID, um, I think everybody's at home. Everybody's always on the phone uh, or the laptop. And I, right, it's quick money. So and, and and I think you know people say you know what you know maybe job you know my job's not going so well or you know, I don't have a job or even if like me I have a job. But I, I'm probably not doing a good job. You know, I probably might not have one much longer if I keep you know, looking at all these things. And, and I personally, I, per, and again, I mean, this is, it sounds crazy to say this, but you understand, like the hour or the time you spent, uh, two couple hours, you know, me, you know, for taking the subway to work that I save, that's time I can spend looking at crypto, right? Um, that's also time, you know, that, you know I, I can, you know, you don't need to sleep as much. So I'm at nighttime. I'm up at nighttime seeing, hey, is, are there any good Uniswap plays? A lot of the Uniswap plays happen at nighttime. I was sleeping when uh, Andre's new, uh, you know, the, his new crypto came out. I think a lot mm -hmm. of us were sleeping, right? Was it like 5, well, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? Yeah. Well, I think quiet, a lot of us do that. We don't have the ability to create limit orders on Uniswap just yet. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple apps coming out. But, but for some of us, we're waking up at 3 in the morning to check on our open trades. You know, to see if that thing is going to dump. So what's going on I, with Uniswap? Are they going to make a Uniswap version 3 with limit orders? Uh, what are they well, sleeping there, on? There are a couple of projects out there LCX that are in that. right now. Unilayer. Uh, LCX, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. LCX, Unilayer, and I think uh, Unidex bot. They're, they're yeah, all projects. Unitrade. Unilayer. What's that? Unitrade, Unilayer, Unidex bot, as well as LCX. Yeah. Actually, the reality yeah. is that um, the reality is that putting a... Uh, a trading uh, a layer of limit orders on Uniswap is is not really that hard. The problem is that um, with gas fees fluctuations as well as uh, congestion, a lot of the limit orders actually fail. And so I was actually talking with a few of the teams solving this problem. And so the biggest problem with unit with uh, with uh, limit orders on on Uniswap is that Ethereum itself is pretty unreliable with with fees and congestion, all that stuff. So a lot of these times you'll put in the perfect limit order, but it actually won't go through. And so the the ecosystem's evolving. But again, like you said, you know, eventually Uniswap V3 is going to come, and that that will be satisfied. The, the demand for yeah. limit orders. I think I've tried Pine Finance for limit orders, and yeah, I think I've had my orders. Uh fall through cancel on me so yeah yeah you could also look at it from the perspective of some of these projects who who say run a pre-sale and on launch day they're launching on uniswap and what will happen is you know they'll they'll provide some liquidity but you'll get front-running bots who will just jam it all up run that yep. price up and then dump everything back down before you can even get an order in to sell. Like you may be a yeah. private sale buyer, say, and you bought at a certain price, but you can't even get an order in because that bot has swallowed up all the liquidity and you're stuck. So, you know, if you had an opportunity to create a limit order, when it gets hit, it gets hit, it triggers and you're selling. So yep. I think there's going to be a lot of popularity there. Um, and, and that may be something that essentially saves Uniswap because People are starting to sour on Uniswap lately. Uh, you know, so many rug pulls. Uh, I, well, isn't that the, the 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 topic of conversation over the last week? How many how many projects 
have rug pulled over the it was last about 10 just yesterday. How many yeah, projects that you thought were legitimate, decent projects who, who, who may have said liquidity is locked. We've doxed our, our developers. We've done this. We've done that. And they still pull the rug out and take everything. <laughs> and everybody is mad. Everybody's pointing the fingers at each other. Why? Because they have nobody on that team to point the finger at because they don't exist. And you know what? Well, I- what they're probably doing right now is creating a new name for a new project and getting ready to do it all again. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think I think the most notorious one that kind of shook everybody was when Bree breeder now they rugged and they were you know and that that was as legit project as people thought because i believe the dev was doxxed dude somewhere up in upstate new york and albany somewhere but yeah you know they they that was the one that shocked everybody that like if they rugged they were audited and everything how can you know how can we trust any other project nowadays look audit audits don't mean anything these these guys are having some type of you know they're putting some loopholes in the contracts you know, even even with liquidity locked, it's so many ways that these guys are figuring out how to scam people that now I think people are just saying, we're just going to stay away. And again, I, th- I think a docs team um, now is becoming a must, right? And you oh, think, oh, they're, totally. they're docs. Yeah, they're docs. We can track them. We can track them down uh, and we can figure out, you know, you know how, how to get, you know, how to get our money back or, you know, maybe we can threaten them. Um, I don't, I, honestly, I don't even... I, I don't even know. Maybe you guys know. If, the, if if a guy is docked and he rugs, do you even have any legal claim over that? Yeah. I, I don't even know. Good luck. You, well, I mean, it's luck. if they're in America, you could easily. There's a lot of uh, regulators. I mean, look at look at Bitconnect, right? If it's a big enough situation, uh, there will yeah. be investigations and arrests. However, the reality is, sadly, sadly, that you have a bunch of really legit projects, legit teams that have been building stuff, and they're sweating, hiring the most expensive lawyers in the world to try to be compliant and they're putting years and millions into building infrastructure for the future and then these uniswap uh, criminals come along and just be start rug pulling and wh- where's the crackdown on that where's the crackdown and, on, on that and here's you know? a pro- and here's a problem that happens now is that when you you know we, when we tweet about something that's a legit project a legit project somebody responds will it rug and i'm like mm-hmm. are you kidding me you can't tell the difference yeah. between a legit because people honestly people don't know anymore and, and that's the Sad truth of it is people don't know, like here, here, here's the project, here it is. They can't tell the difference between a project on Uniswap and a project that gets listed on like Binance or OKX or Hubie. They, they don't know. Yeah. And here's, I- here's my opinion on this, Elliot, and then I've posted about this on Twitter. I, I, think, <clears throat> I think there's going to be a shift back to centralized exchanges somewhat in, until something is done about this. Yeah, I saw your post and on that. Much, much too easy to create a project on Uniswap, you know, on Uniswap for pennies on the dollar, yeah. right? So it, there's no commitment from that team, fin- no financial commitment. They're not risking anything. They create something, cost them nearly nothing. They collect, they run, and they can come back and do it again until a project says, I'm taking X amount of dollars from my treasury, say, 10 Bitcoin to get listed on such and such exchange, and they actually right. do it. You know they've made a financial commitment right. to to the long run of that, you know, the long term success of that project. What, what guarantee do you have? I mean, saying saying liquidity lock is what, what is that? That's 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 it's meaningless. You're, you're just audited, audited, audited is almost meaningless now. Liquidity lock is. I mean, the, some of the projects that we've I've talked about have been audited. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not going to, you know, call anybody out, but they've been audited by people who have been respect, respected in the industry. Um, and you know, I, I saw one of them post something yesterday, like a thread on how they audited it and how the guys were able to um, essentially, you know, do the do the rug pull. Um, yeah. But um, but uh, <clears throat> but um, Elon, you know, you make a good point. You know, with these exchanges, you have to pay. I mean, I think we all know, you know, six figures minimum, right? I mean, even for a second tier exchange nowadays, you're paying. Uh, you know, six figures. And so if you're going to make that type of investment, you know, that, that, you know, again, that means you must have done something um, credible or notable in your, in your, in your, in your real life. Show some commitment. Show some commitment and that then you're not going to rug. And also, also, again, you know, we know that when you do this on exchange, you've doxed yourself to the exchange to the point where you do something shady. The exchange has all your information. 
Yeah, of course. Exactly. And and obviously having having just a public facing CEO from a, a jurisdiction that would in theory be able to go after basic crimes like scams, right? right? That there, you don't need new laws. You don't need new laws to enforce, hey, they stole my money. Yeah. You know, that's that there's old laws yeah. that can enforce that. But I wanted to get right. back one quick holdover. I, I just, uh sorry, I just, we, not to interrupt, but one quick holdover. Are we still in a bull run, is this just this degen sort of Uniswap market? Is this just the prelude to a real fundamentally oh, driven market? I don't think we've hit a bull run yet. This is oh, we're if, not a bull. You, you know, for those who have been around in, in 2017, and I'm not saying we're going to have a 2017. This this hasn't felt like a bull run yet. Um, I, I I think when it comes. <laughs> you won't be asking this question. You won't be saying, do you think we've hit a bull run? Oh, it's, it's right. going to smack you in the face and it's going to be a bull run. And everybody, everybody, in, when, when your grandfather is saying, you know, what's the price of Bitcoin? That's when you that's know. That's when it's a bull run. That's, yeah. what's in a, that's a bull run. We had the mini alt season in the summertime, right? Mm -hmm. So in the summertime, we saw a lot of cryptos do well. Um, but it wasn't throughout the market, right? And I think when we, we see the bull run coming, again, I was not a part of the the last bull run. I, all I know is from what people have said, but essentially what they're saying is um, you'll see any and every coin pump two, three, four, five X, right? Um, and again, in order for the bull run to happen, we do definitely need new investors to come in, which is why, you know, it's great to see the Michael Saylors and the Jacks from Twitter and the PayPals get involved um, because that just brings more attention to crypto. Right. Um, I don't think we all want to be selling our backs to each other. I think we want newer investors. Right. We want we definitely need newer investors to come into this space. And so when we start seeing CNBC or, or, or um, MSNBC or Fox yeah. start talking more about Bitcoin, that's when we start realizing, all right, you know, we're, we're getting close. Which so, I think yeah. we are. I think we're I think we're getting close, but we aren't there yet. I, I think the the bull run that. The next bull run that happens is going to be much different from the 2017 bull run. As you mentioned, the last bull run, every and any pumped. Right. No, I mean they they updated the website. They they created you know they created something yeah. new and, and looked colorful and it would pump five you know five x. That's not good. Not that's not going to happen this time. But it, what it's going to be is it's more going to be more of a focus group of legit projects, strong projects that are going to pump to high heaven because. They are legit projects. Those are the ones that are just going to go through the roof, I think. Yeah. Now, here's a great here's a great thing. Whether we're in a bull market or in a bear market, like we were talking about small caps earlier, whether we're in a bull market or a bear market, you're going to make a lot of money in either one if you know how to find small caps. So that's that's what I think the great thing that's, is about small caps. That's, a, that's, a, that's an excellent point, and I, and I agree, agree with 100%. I think small caps in any bearer bull, I think that I think they'll always pump, right? And the philosophy I have, and I and I and I, met, and I sent like a tweet out like you know a year year and a half ago was, you know, if you have five small caps, right? Five five small caps, let's say under under five million dollars, you put a thousand dollars into each of them, right? Worst case scenario is you lose five thousand dollars. I highly doubt that. Obviously, you know, the whole go to zero thing is an exaggeration, but if if one or two of them does two or three x, and the other ones don't do anything, you you made a good amount of money. You're still up. Right. And, and I think, right. And, and again, I, I think right now you can give me five projects. I think crypto, different crypto, crypto, uh, generation crypto does a lot of these. They do the, um, you know, the, the top cryptos under 2 million or under 5 million. And you just pick five of them and you put a thousand dollars each of them. I, I am almost certain at the very least you're going to, you know, you're going to make a, one, two, three thousand dollars. Right. Yeah, they're, not all, they're not all going to flop, but you got, you know, again, it's, it's, it's not financial you're advice, everybody. But you're playing the odds. And again, one of them, and again, one of them, if it's legitimate, it might do a 10, 20 X. Yep. Yeah, so you risk $5,000 to make 20. So essentially yeah, we I, have, we have agreement that we're not in a, a full on bull run yet is, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Not yet. I would say that. No. All right. Well, now's the magical time. You guys, it's time to shill your bags. Uh, tell us what's the most exciting projects on your radar. Uh, we'll start with you, Elon. Oh, okay. Some people are going to be happy about this. Um, for me, we were talking about mass adoption earlier. For me, it's going to be social media. Uh, I, th I think there's a place for DeFi, but for me, I think it's social media. If we're going to get millions of people that have never been introduced to crypto before, it's going to be social media. So for me, it's going to be vid. Um, and the token for it is buy. I think it has the best chance of getting 5, 10, 20 million new people introduced to crypto that have never heard about crypto before. There you go. 
Uh, again, I like social media. I started with a social project uh, before t- pivoting fully into gaming. My pushback on vid would be, you know, people are very, very slow to adopt a new social media network. In fact, it's the last thing everyone wants to do is pick up a new social network. Um, and that you've seen, you know, as much as centralization exists in other industries, there's no, uh, nothing compares to the centralization in the social media industry. And that's because people want to be where the most people are. And so my pushback on that is that uh, it's really hard to get people to adopt genuinely a new social network. How do you see them overcoming that, Elon? Um, I've heard that argument before. And I mean, that's a fair argument. I think it's very hard to get people to get to start using a new web browser or a new email, but to simply download a new video sharing app. I think everybody already on their phones have Snapchat, Instagram. It's not that that hard to just download a new um, vi- video sharing app and especially one that pays all of its users. I think that's going to be big because when TikTok, for instance, got banned in India uh, several months ago, there was this new app that came out that was pretty much a TikTok clone that immediately got 10, 20 million new users. So I don't think it's that hard, especially if you, if the users will be earning and all the users will be earning. Um, I don't think that it's going to be that difficult to get several mil- million users on the platform. Thank you, Elon. Vi, Vid. Uh, a TikTok competitor, a crypto native TikTok competitor. That's Elon's pick. How about you, Mr. Business? Uh, I'm going to go with Ferrum Network. Um, that's a project I've been involved with uh, for a year now. Their Unifier wallet, it works. It's amazing. You can easily send crypto with um, with a link. You don't have to remember, you know, copy and pasting all these um, codes now. Um, and then when you send a crypto, the other person can confirm that they got the crypto as sort of like a security measure. Also, I call them the Amazon of staking. Everybody's using their staking platform. Their um, technology is amazing. They actually have a guy on the team who worked um, in, in uh, making the game Halo, which is pretty cool. Um, Ian Friend, if you guys have, have seen him, he's a great guy. Um, he's a local New York guy like me. Um, he's always making the rounds, always talking to people, always in the telegram. I'm educating people. Um, it's still a low market cap, it's around $5 million. Um, I think something like their product, the Unifier Wallet product, is really important to help crypto go mainstream. It, if, if people can, you know, again, one of the biggest barriers is, you know, people copying, pasting, and all these, uh, you know, these token addresses and sending them and then entering the wrong one. Um, Ferrum Networks Unifier Wallet makes that really super easy. Now they've just now they're going to launch Staking 3.0, which means you stake your Ferrum, you earn FRMX. So. What that does is essentially now drives up the price of Ferrum Network. Actually, it was up about 20% today, uh, the price of FRM, because now people want to buy FRM so they can earn FRMX. And I believe the total supply of FRMX is only about uh, 30,000. It's really low supply. I think it's only about a 250K market cap. So FRM in conjunction with FRMX, um, those, those, those will be my, my topics going forward. Thanks for that, Mr. Biz. Mr. Bullrun Gravano, what's your pick? And there can be multiple if you want. Yeah, no, um, one that I've been in for a while and, and I really look forward to seeing um, grow is Energy Web Token. Um, lot, there's a lot of big names behind that, including Gavin Wood, who, you know, obviously was uh, one of the co-founders of Ethereum. And there, there are a lot of big energy companies behind this. And as we look towards uh, clean energy solutions and low carbon solutions. Um, I think I think this project is giving people the opportunity to invest in um, their, their you know, have their own stake in you know a low emission low carbon solution is going to be um, something that investors are going to remain very interested in uh there's a lot of energy companies that are already validators on the network that have taken a stake in this there are a lot of big names that have already invested in it um i think that's a big one um so so really i would say energy web and ocean are two of my big calls going forward in uh, 2021 
Yeah, and those are both juicy, juicy fundamental plays, also bigger uh, market caps. So I appreciate you bringing in uh, something that's, you know, obviously, you know, at, uh, what is that, a hundred few hundred million market cap of energy web i'm also one know. of the few uh, one of the few things i do feel passionately about is that uh, renewable energies will kind of fix some of the sins of our fathers <laughs> as far as um, you know environmental stuff and i think we can yeah. all i think we can make money and make uh, the earth a little cleaner as well at the same time so i'm, I'm very very interested in in that project and i i appreciate you bringing that one up uh, so to recap, we have uh, Vid and the Vi token from Elon, Mr. Biz, uh, pointing us towards Ferrum Network, a really awesome, very useful uh, solution for uh, a lot of projects looking to do staking, as well as a really cool uh, mobile wallet and some interesting other solutions there. And then, of course, Mr. Gravano dropping on us uh, Energy Web Token, as well as Ocean, who, you know, Ocean is almost becoming quite like a chain link of the data markets. Uh, it's, it's very yeah. interesting. I could see them making a, a hyperbolic run to a few billion dollars, definitely. Uh, one of a bag I'm very, very excited to be holding. Um, I appreciate you guys sharing that. And uh, I guess we'll end now. We have about an hour long here. It's been a really awesome chat with you guys. Uh, what are your final words uh, for the audience? Obviously, I encourage you guys all to go follow these guys. Um, but what are your final words for the audience for this episode? Go ahead, Elon. Final words. Um, be safe out there. Don't invest um, in things with anonymous teams. Uh, and don't really take too much credence to things that claim that they're audited and uh and yeah, don't get rug pulled. <laughs> <laughs> Wise words. Mr. Biz. Um, I would say learn how to dollar cost average. That's the number one way you're going to uh, avoid getting wrecked, right? You no, know, yes, of course, it's not going to, it means that you're going to miss out on really, really big gains because you didn't go all in, but it's also going to mean that you didn't, um, as one guy said, spend two months of tuition um, and lose it all. Right. So learn how to dollar cost average, guys. Thank you, Mr. Biz. All right, Mr. Gravano. I would say, especially if you're new, use this time where so many people are working remotely to to learn, to to read, to um, to follow him, not just influencers, but people who are building in uh, building on the on blockchain, who are contributing, um, find find a book get online, read, read blogs, and then make mistakes. Just don't do it with a ton of money. Do, make, make small trades and, and learn from your mistakes because everyone on this call has made mistakes, fallen on their face, lost trades, probably lost at times more than we were prepared to lose. But you make those mistakes, you learn from them, and you get better. Just don't continuously making make the same mistakes. And fight this battle all the time don't be greedy like it's so easy to be greedy in this game and always go you got a 2x go for a 3x or go for that 4x because you see it pumping know when to take your capital out and and fight that greed well thank you guys so much this has been an amazing amazing episode i hope to have you guys on pretty soon again go follow these guys i'll have all of their twitters linked in the description of this video and once again thanks guys and i hope to have you guys on very soon if you guys enjoyed this episode, smash that like button. And remember, each and every comment on this video is entered to win your very own Ledger Nano S. And if you want more content covering the most undervalued coins in the space, then you're definitely going to want to subscribe and put that bell notification on so that you're the first to know when I put out new content on this channel. As usual, thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Elio Trades, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.